My name is Abby Kearns, and I am the Executive Director of Cloud Foundry Foundation. And for those of you that aren't familiar, it is a sister open source project to Cloud Native Computing Foundation underneath the Linux Foundation. And we house Cloud Foundry, the open source platform as a service. So I am responsible for Cloud Foundry, the open service broker API projects, and um, all of the extension projects that go around that. And you're probably wondering why I'm here. So today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about what we're doing in Cloud Foundry, some announcements we had a couple of months ago around Kubernetes, but also what does collaboration look like for all of us collectively in the future when we think about Cloud Native. But first I wanna build up towards that because I think it's important to talk a little about where we're going technologically wise and why it's important and more important now than ever before. Back in the 1800s, some rich barons had the idea to really fundamentally change supply chain logistics and, and actually even management of that supply chain across the United States. And they had the idea for the first transcontinental railroad. But that idea wasn't enough to make it a reality. It was the thousands of engineers and builders and creators that over decades transformed the, both the idea of what supply chain could look like, but also the movement of people across the United States. Or in the early 20th century, when an architect had the idea of bringing together the Marin County and San Francisco, which to date had been really, they've been transversing those two areas via boat. And it was very unpredictable, very unstable. And he had the idea of bridging those two communities together. But it was the builders, the creators, that turned it into one of the icons that it is today. And, and by the way, in order to achieve that, it required a great deal of collaboration beyond just the builders and the architect. It required collaboration on the different communities and counties on funding and enablement and how to bring two communities together. And then a little bit more recent. How many of you here have a smartphone? How many have two? That's right, we all have it. You know, today for me, it is an invaluable tool. But in 2007, when the iPhone first launched, it was interesting, it was nice, it was, had really changed the user experience of a phone, but it was still a phone that texted and took photos. But then something happened in 2008, and the App Store launched. And that fundamentally changed the phone. Those thousands of apps created by the thousands of developers collaborated together to make that platform an invaluable technology that it is today that powers most of our lives. So I would like to posit that right now the developers are the hero of the story. The developers are the heroes that are guiding where we're going in technology. I'll give an example of this. And I, I know that I use digital transformation a lot and, and I'm actually frankly looking for a new word, so anybody got a new word to replace digital transformation, I'm all ears. But I think about banking, and I think about the fact that I now use my phone to do 100% of my banking. Five years ago, that was not the case. But today, I'm able to do that because of an application that sits on my phone. And that may not seem like a lot, a mobile app, but think about what that means for my bank. My bank, which is a Fortune 100 enterprise company, what that mobile app means to them. Because a mobile app isn't just updated once a year. It's updated over and over again. And so that mobile app represents to my bank the fact that they have a mobile application. They have continuous delivery somewhere because they're constantly iterating on that application. And they have a quick feedback loop between me, the user, the engineering team, the developer, as well as the product team. And so you start to see this mobile app as a representation of what's beginning to be agile practices. 
And you see a mobile app is a representation of what cloud-native collaboration, but a cloud-native application architecture starts to look like. And so for me, that banking app and the com combination of the developers that have created that on a platform represent where I think cloud-native technology is going and the need for that collaboration. So we're seeing organizations like my bank that are trying to figure out how to change the way they think about code. Not just how they think about it, but how they write it, deploy it, and then iterate on that code, because you can't just push it out one time and be done with it. And that then really helps them rethink how systems are managed, secured, because everyone needs security, and then finally scaled as these applications take off and they get momentum and people get excited about them. So, what we're starting to see is these organizations are, are taking these apps and taking these steps and using that as an opportunity to rethink fundamentally how their business thinks about technology, but more importantly, how it leverages that technology to change their business. A couple of months ago, we, at our Cloud Foundry Summit in Basel, talked a little bit about Kubernetes. Actually, we talked a lot about Kubernetes. Um, for those of you that are here at this event and have been following Kubernetes, it has fundamentally changed the way we think about containers, container orchestration. And I'd say that we all agree that the momentum it has in the marketplace is fundamentally changing how we think about cloud native around that. We were also looking at our users that are trying to figure out how to run these cloud native apps alongside more containerized workloads, large applications that don't just necessarily fit neatly in that 12-factor app platform. And so we combined Kubernetes with Bosch, our open source tool chain, and together created Container Runtime. And Container Runtime, alongside the application runtime, both of which can be managed by Bosch, are what we think of when we now think about Cloud Foundry. And the representation that that brings is the opportunity to give developers and builders and operators an opportunity to run the right tool for the right job. One of the things that is really interesting about Cloud Foundry is that it's open source. The same with Kubernetes. We're at an open source conference and for me, open source represents opportunity. Opportunity to bring together diverse people from diverse backgrounds across a multitude of companies and organizations to solve really hard problems. And so we think about the power of open source for not just Cloud Foundry Foundation, but also the Cloud Native Computing Foundation and the communities that um, straddle both of those. The opportunity exists to bring people together to collaborate to solve really hard problems in a space that's changing pretty quickly. Diversity is a, pardon the proverb, but a little bit of a soapbox I carry around with me as one of, uh, as a woman in tech. And, and I think for me, it's more important than just saying diversity, it's saying inclusivity and making everyone feel welcome. Because one of the things that I'm most passionate about is that beyond bringing more people to the table, I think that's the only way we solve really interesting hard problems, is getting more people to the table with different perspectives. And so my theme today is I really thought about what am I gonna talk about at Cloud Native Computing Foundation and Cloud Native Con is really, what is the power when you bring together such a broad group of talented people to solve really hard problems and how do we get more of them in and get more voices to the table because I think that's where the power of this collaboration really breaks free. But it also, I think that's where we solve the really interesting problems for end users that are trying to develop applications, but more importantly, are changing their business. So we often talk about collaboration alongside cloud native and open source within Cloud Foundry, because for me, it's important to give developers the best experience but allow that technology to continue to evolve and take advantage of really new and interesting technologies that are, are coming into the market like Kubernetes. 
But something you might not know is we collaborate across a lot of different open source technologies today. Container runtime takes advantage of Kubernetes, but one of the things we launched in 2016 was the Open Service Broker API. And that is where we took the Cloud Foundry Service Broker API and extended that beyond Cloud Foundry. Kubernetes was the first to take advantage of that, followed by OpenShift, and we're seeing more and more companies take advantage of the simple and elegant way of binding a service to an application. But more importantly, we've taken advantage of, quite eagerly, the OCI initiative and bringing that Run-C capabilities inside the platform. But then we've also been heavily involved in CNI, which runs in Cloud Foundry, CSI, as we're really figuring out ways to integrate and attach storage solutions to the container, but then also Envoy and Open Tracing. So each of these technologies are areas where we either collaborate or are leveraging today, but it also, for me, represents what the power of this collaboration is. I think CNCF highlights the power of bringing together a multitude of technologies that are making cloud native possible. Because it isn't just about creating an app. It's about managing that app, scaling that app, managing the services around that app, being able to address your concerns and your organizations, and making that possible for you to do at scale. So one of the things that I'm most excited about is the fact that all of this is available in open source. And so that each and every one of you can not only take advantage of the technology and pulling it into your existing solutions, but more importantly that you can participate in these technologies. So going back to bringing more voices to the table, when we think about the power of open source and the power of cloud native, it's getting more voices to the table. If you're building agile teams, what are you doing? You're asking more voices to be heard the voice of the user, the voice of your customers, the voice of your operations team, your DBA, security, compliance, network. You know, the list goes on for people that you want to hear and have a voice and say in how applications are created, managed, and scaled. So when I think about Cloud Foundry, and we talk a lot about where Cloud Foundry is going and how it's evolving, we're combining these best of breed solutions either through the open source, so getting more voices to the table and building that bridge for other people to participate and bring their ideas, but also the collaboration on the technology aspect. We've started with container runtime and application runtime, but there's so much more potential to bring these technologies together, to build on and innovate, to allow these technologies to get to scale. And for us, what we've seen an interesting phenomenon, and I've been in enterprise tech a really, really, really long time, and I'm not gonna give a timeline because that dates me, but I've seen containers and SOA come through once or twice. So what's interesting to me though is seeing how a lot of these organizations are starting to catch on in new ways. Beyond just paying lip service to the new technology and figuring out ways to integrate it, they're using it to fundamentally alter their business. And I think as we think about what our, our job is here, it's the realization that technology that we're building today is going to fundamentally change the landscape of many enterprise organizations. And not just how they use technology, but it's gonna fundamentally change the way they offer that technology and engage with their customers. An example of that is Home Depot. How many of you are familiar with Home Depot? You've probably been there once or twice, right? When you think about Home Depot, do you think about cutting edge technology, cloud native applications? No, you think about DIY, big box retail. But Home Depot is actually, for me, one of the most innovative groups out there right now. And the last two years, They've gone from zero to 2,500 developers. They have 2,500 cloud-native developers writing cloud-native applications right now. In that two years, they've gotten over 1,700 applications in production alone. So they are revamping their back end, they're revamping their point of sale, but also the e-commerce, 
tool rental, and many other technologies. They are bleeding edge for a lot of these new technologies in the retail space. They're getting currently over two billion requests a month across their platform. And for them, the fundamental change didn't come just from being able to develop the applications, but it also came from them being able to do one deployment every six months for a single app. So now they're doing deployments every half hour. Think about the change that gives to you as an organization when you can deploy a new application to production during business hours every half hour. That changes your teams, that changes the way you think about technology, but it changes what you think your potential is as a company. And by the way, their, their stock price is showing that. Their stock price continues to go up. It's the highest it's ever been. And when I think about the role cloud native plays in companies like that, we'll see a lot more of that. We'll see a lot more of companies like Home Depot and Comcast and Ford Motor that are fundamentally changing the way they think about these technologies and what they're doing with them. And by the way, one of the most amazing things about Home Depot is they took this idea of building developers and creating developers and created boot camps. So now that they take team members and train them on how to be a developer. And as we think about the shortage we have today in cloud native skills, cloud native developers, a company that can really think about agile, think about cloud native, and then turn that into an opportunity for their entire organization is a really powerful statement on the role technology continues to play in the evolution. Now, I couldn't be up here and not brag a little bit about our community. So I have to give the, the plug, one of which is sitting here, Suze. Hi, Suze. Um, we have nearly 70 members in Cloud Foundry Foundation. One thing I'm most proud of, though, is over 40% of our member base are our end users. So companies like Home Depot and American Airlines are leveraging this momentum to not only use open source, but give back to open source. Over the last two years, we've had over 110,000 commits, nearly 7,300 pull requests, and that's across 513 repos. Cloud Foundry is very big and very complex, and we continue to be excited about the momentum, the velocity, but the involvement by a variety of companies that continue to make it the best technology possible. Earlier this year, we also launched a Cloud Foundry Certified Developer Training and Certification Program. To date, we've had over 10,000 people sign up for the training and certification and continue to see organizations like Volkswagen and Home Depot and many others take advantage of that to build their cloud native teams. So as I leave you here today, one of the things that I think a lot about is how do we take what is so special and amazing about open source and carry that forward beyond just our technology companies, but to the variety of companies that are just starting to think about technology in new ways. And so I think a lot about building community, getting more voices to the table in our community and getting more people excited about open source and cloud native. And how do we continue to build those bridges with other communities that are doing really cool stuff, like the Kubernetes community, Envoy, Open Tracing, GRPC, and many other projects? So I would invite you that are here to join our community or come to one of our summits. Our next one will be in Boston in April. Um, you can also run the Boston Marathon at the exact same time. So you could do two things at one time. But I want to leave you with that I think cloud, cloud native and the momentum around open source are just going to continue. And I'm super excited to see that growth here at Cloud Native Con. And I'm excited to see so many faces here that want to learn more about our collaboration efforts. So thank you. By the way, any questions? Yes, ma'am. Um, 
That's a great question. So Kubo, and the question was explaining Bosch and Kubernetes. Kubo, as it was fondly named, is Kubernetes on Bosch. And that was formally donated, it was originally created by Google and Pivotal in uh, late 2016, early 2017. And it was formally donated to the Cloud Foundry Foundation in June of this year. And Kubo was a really confusing concept. And so, and having that part of Cloud Foundry as a whole was really confusing. And so what we aimed to do was build a bigger story. So we renamed it in October, Container Runtime. So that you have the opportunity to run containerized workloads with, on, within Kubernetes alongside your cloud native apps that are running on top of Cloud Foundry's Elastic Runtime in the same environment, orchestrated by the same tool chain, and you have that opportunity to choose the right tool for the right job and make it easier for your operators. Make it easier for your operators to spin up the VMs, to scale the VMs, to patch it, to handle security and identity management and all of those feature functionalities. You can now wrap into a single platform because we've always advocated that it is the right tool for the right job. And Elastic Runtime isn't the right platform for every single application. And more often than not, enterprises need that path forward to say, how do I make big baby steps to get to 12-factor apps, microservices, even serverless at some point, just how to, giving people that path. Any other questions? Yes. I don't have visual aids to do a deep dive comparison, but I will say that one of the biggest comparisons, and I feel like Brian Gracely at Red Hat um, has done the best description, so I will steal from him, is it's structured versus unstructured. And having the piece components in, in one platform versus a highly opinionated structured components in another platform. There are some similar technology, technologies like the open service broker API and uh, now Kubernetes. But there's a lot of, uh, of differences in terms of other technologies that are used within Cloud Foundry that are not necessarily a one-for-one -one match in OpenShift. Any other questions? All right, well, thank you all for your time. <laughs>